Legend of Total War here, and today we're going to be starting a new Blitz campaign for Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. It's been a really long time since I've done one. I think the last one I did was actually Shogun 2, something like 3 or 4 years ago. Now, in case you're not familiar with Blitz campaigns, it's kind of what I built the channel on originally. And what they are, are a super try-hard mode, where you try to conquer the entire map in as few turns as possible. So, you need to make that distinction from speedruns. It's not a speedrun, where a speedrun is where you try to, like, get through the entire game as quickly as possible in like under an hour sort of thing. Um, this is where you meticulously spend probably like a hundred hours in using every exploit un in the book, but no mods, in trying to conquer the entire map in as few turns as possible. Typically speaking, in order to do any kind of impressive blitz, a movement bug is required. Now most Total War games have pretty significant movement bugs, and Total War Warhammer 3 possibly has the most egregious uh, movement bug in the game. So, it is possible with one particular character to conquer the entire map, I believe, in a single turn. On the first turn. I want to give a big shout out to Instant Gaming. This Blitz campaign here would not be possible without their continued support. So if you haven't already, check out Instant Gaming and get yourself a good deal on products that you were looking for. Not just on Total War related products, but other games as well. You can routinely find some DLCs up to 85% off. So Instant Gaming is a great place to just check out every now and again, see what the deals are, and get yourself a good deal. Big thanks to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video. Let's firstly do a process of elimination here, okay? There are 23 races in the game currently. And the movement bug is able to be done by everyone except for the Warriors of Chaos and Nurgle. The reason for that is that this movement bug requires you to be able to locally recruit a unit that takes one turn to recruit. The Warriors of Chaos and Nurgle both instantly recruit their units, and so they cannot actually do this movement bug. They've got other things that they can do, but I need this particular movement bug in order to do it in one turn. So those two are out of it for this. Both Nurgle and Warriors of Chaos can't do it. The next thing that's required is we need a character that has access to a mount. Okay, because if a character has a mount, then it's possible to reset their movement after they've captured a settlement. Um, if you don't have a mount, then it's not capable of doing that. And as you guys know, if you occupy a settlement, you lose all your movement. So any faction that doesn't have access to characters on a mount... Um, aren't able to do this. So, for example, I tossed up about maybe having the Sisters of Twilight doing it, but they're technically not on a mount. Um, you can't switch their mount, so they're not able to do it. I was thinking about um, Norska, and Throg, it would be, you know, a decent character to try it, but he can't switch his mount. Um, Lizardmen can't quickly switch their mounts, like Slans can't switch their mounts. You need a character that's going to be able to regenerate and also be very powerful in combat. Dwarves are not really going to be able to do it, since only um, Rune Lords are able to have a mount, and it takes a long time to get those mounts. So one idea I had was Bretonia, because Bretonian Lords always have a mount option. Uh, well, at least the, the regular Lords, right? So I was thinking, get Luan Leonko, who can switch his mount, and then you could also recruit another Lord. Uh, but the problem is that Bretonia actually can't locally recruit in every single province the moment they capture it because they need a military building. So you need to have a faction that is able to recruit from a province that has no military buildings. So that sort of disables Bretonia. Then you also need a faction that's able to use the movement bug across water. So which faction is able to satisfy all of these conditions? And the answer might surprise you. It's probably one of the least popular factions in this game. It's the Dark Elves. Okay. Because Black Arcs can do the movement exploit over water. And they can also... If a Lord can recruit from a Black Ark, they can do it while they're at the water. It counts as local recruitment. So, you need access to a Black Ark. Now, two of these characters have access to a Black Ark on turn one. Lockyer Felhart and Malice Darkblade. Lockyer Felhart could recruit, potentially, you know, several dozen Black Arcs throughout the course of a Blitz. However, every Black Arc that you recruit will not be able to move, because they don't have access to a mount. And Lockyer Felhart is not a one-man Doomstack. Malice Darkblade is a one-man Doomstack. So he's the character. So, 
Legendary difficulty, very hard battles. I'm not going to enable end game scenarios. We could do it if we really want to, but it will just be grind for the sake of grind. Um, it, it won't because Malice Darkblade. By the time he gets to rank 50, we'll be able to smash all these guys in because they'll it'll trigger. Um, Actually, no, it won't trigger. It'll give you the early warning timer on long campaign victory, but we should be done by turn one. So it really doesn't matter about enabling end game scenarios. I and mean, it's not about that anyway. Enabling sea lanes, we are not going to need it because I am not going to traverse across the water. Uh, as in, um, you know, the, the sea lanes. I'm definitely going to need to traverse across the water. Anyway, let's get to it. And I'll explain in detail how this works. Now, this is not going to be like a 60 part series because. Last time we did that with Shogun 2, people got the idea of it pretty early on. You know, oh, he's just using the movement bug a hundred times. Um, there's more to it than that in this, but really everything that you need to know about how this works can be shown within the first hour, I think. And then outside of that, I'll just go ahead and do it and show you the end result. But yeah, I really don't think making a Let's Play series out of this is going to be worth it because it's just... You're just going to say the same thing over and over and over again. 500 settlements. You know, it's, that's a lot. Now, and also, all the real challenge in this one comes at the start. And then, at the very end, finalizing the last few finicky conquests. Because there are a few settlements in this game that are a little bit tricky to deal with. Because... Okay, there's that where that guy is. A few settlements that are a bit tricky. Because you can't locally recruit from them. And you can't get a black arc near them. And those settlements are gates. So not in Ulthwan. Ulthwan should be fine. All of the gates are fairly close to the close co fairly close to the coastline. Oh god, say that ten times fast. Um, the gates over here, this gate here is fairly close. That one there is iffy. I might be able to get that over there. Um, this one over here is that is also iffy. And then, of course, you've got the Bastion Settlements, which these ones here are not close to the coastline at all. And so, in order to occupy those, we may need to have other characters go and do it. Now, there are ways to go about it, and the Dark Elves are uniquely in a position to do that. But that is going that is really going to be kind of grindy as hell to sort of get that going. So... Firstly, let's just start with Malice, and then I'll explain how I intend to take the gates on turn one later. If I can't manage to take it on turn one, then I'll take them on turn two. Okay, so Malice Darkblade. So the gist of this movement bug is simply this. You have to have no heroes in your army. So this guy here, Bastard sorry, looking. you're out of here. Could use him in the first battle, but Losing just not going to use him, right? Grip. And what you simply do is have access to the admiral here if you do this you save the game and then load the game and then cancel the recruitment it'll reset your movement okay now in order to reset our movement after we have occupied a settlement okay malice darkblade needs to have no units in his army he has to be by himself and he has to have a mount because you have to switch your mount after you've occupied the settlement then you locally recruit load the save the game load the save file and he can leave Okay, so right now, Fire. I can't occupy any settlements, because I don't have access to Spite. I need to get to rank 7 to occupy Spite. See, this is where I had trouble with the other factions, right? Where, technically, all the conditions were available for them to do it, but they didn't have access to maps. Like, one faction I was thinking about doing was Vampire Coast, because they can recruit, and I think they can do this movement exploit over the water. But they don't have access to their mounts easily, so maybe, maybe you could do this with Luther Harkon. Maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I figured Malice Darkblade is like the best early game one-man doomstack since you've got access to Sarkhan right away. There's no serious penalties to this stuff right now. Like, who cares about Slash um, Corruption if you don't ever end the turn? So it's fine. Anyway, we don't ever really need to um, research a technology since we're never going to hit... Well, actually, we are going to hit end turn. Uh, but we're not going to actually um, end the turn, if that makes sense. It shall be... So, what we need to do here is try to get to a point where Malice has access to Spite and is also strong enough to be able to handle every army that's currently in the game at, at uh, turn one. So, you know, some of the notable challenges that he might have to face at some point is Scarbrand. Um, but if you're rank 50 when you fight Scarbrand, should be okay if I can manage to get a health potion. 
if I can get the Talisman of Preservation, Armor of Destiny. You know, that'll get our ward save up quite a bit. If I go and get Imric's Defeat Trait, that'll give me Fire Resistance, which will be really good against Scarbrand. Um, that's another thing as well. I'm not using any mods. I'm not using the Trait Manager. So I have to be very careful about the traits, because I'm going to rack up 40 traits very easily, right? So we need to go and get the required defeat traits very early on. Okay, so Malice is going by himself. Because, yeah, we don't want, like, dwarf defeat traits early on and then be locked out of all the good ones. So it'd be good if we go get Mal um, let's go Throt the Uncleans defeat trait as soon as possible. Um, we don't need to get Sigvold or... Um, or uh, Wurzag's defeat trait, because his ward save is already so high. But it definitely wouldn't hurt in the early stages of the game. Throp is absolutely necessary. Later down the track, we can think about getting him gore, uh, wades through gore, just by sacrificing a couple of these units. It's not a big deal. Okay, I think I'm in a bad position here, because I can't actually use my... Okay, that should be alright. Because, yeah, I was going to blob them around and then bomb them, but they've got me stuck in here. Okay, if we could just come through here. Yeah, that's better. Fight there. Okay. Getting a uh, Krokgar's defeat trait would be good for melee defense. Don't really need to worry too much about melee attack traits like Hellebronze. It's not that important, even though she's fairly close by. Of course, you don't really want to be going from one side of the map to the other in a single run. That would be, um, <laughs> that'd be a pain, but you can do that. You, you could do that. There's no limit to how much you can do this movement bug. As long as you can find a place to recruit locally, then yeah, you can do it. Alright, we got to be careful that we don't route as well. Still got access to Sarkhan, so we got a bit of wiggle room here. Sarkhan will, of course, be able to kill them fairly quickly, but he'll decay. Not worried yet. Maybe when he gets down to about 800 health, that'd be the time to do it. Now, with these guys here, obviously I don't want to get them totally smashed early on, because it will take some time to replenish them. I will kill. Okay, we're approaching 800 health. Okay, time to go full Tsarkan. Now, Tsarkan can regenerate a little bit using uh, Reaper of Souls, but... The passive damage that he he takes will um, overtake that pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, wait until he's taking a little bit more damage. Come on. Okay, let's see if we can get more than one unit with this. That would be good. Bring this guy in. Because at least if he takes some damage, it's fine as long as he doesn't get killed. Now, the... Oh! Oh. Okay, then. Whoops. I didn't realize I didn't break through. Well, of course, they opened the gate for us, didn't they? Ah, okay. Well, you're going to have to break through that, then, to provide some assistance. Because Zarkane is not going to hold out for much longer. The army losses shouldn't be too far off, but still... Come on, Sarkan, you can do it. Hold on, just a little bit longer. There's only a handful of units left. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit more force to come in and help. We need to kill this stuff really quickly now. Because, yeah, losing Malice Darkblade on the very first battle would be really bad. Although, I think if we win the battle, he still is fine. 
Even if he gets wounded. In this form. Come on. So I can hold on just a little bit longer. You can do this and it's still regenerate even if you're not actually reaping any souls. Oh, we've got to get in here. Just kill them as quickly as we can now. I need the army losses. I was hoping to do this with zero casualties, but no such luck. Okay, there's the army losses. We're okay. So we really, really want to save these sort of units for emergencies, for really tough battles. Because, because we got to consider as well that Nagashas are is occupied by like two full stacks and while malice dark blade might be able to handle that on his own i'm not 100 percent sure because i'm not going to be able to pick up the sword of cain it's not possible to pick it up on turn one turn two maybe if alario picks it up sometimes i've seen her do it at least that was when the game first came out um so if you took it off her on turn two that's fine but she'll be dead on turn two so in fact everyone should be dead on turn two and if we occupy the Shrine of Cain, we won't be able to pick it up. It's kind of a glitch that's uh, caused her to uh, pick it up. Yeah, so we took a little bit of damage there, that's okay. Alright, we are definitely going to need Root Marcher at some point, but not right now. Okay. Now, we want to come over here and attack Bilius Cliffs. Oh, but Legend, you just ran out of movement! No, I didn't. I thought you're not gonna hit end turn. No, we're not going to finish the end turn. Definitely gonna need to hit end turn. Like if you're doing this on like very hard difficulty, you can quick save. But on legendary difficulty, in order to quick save, you have to hit end turn. There's no other way, apart from starting a battle, because you need to save the game. And that's the great thing about doing it with this with Dark Elves, is that they can actually do this movement exploit in enemy territory, as long as there's a Black Ark nearby. Dark Blade. And then our movement is reset. Black Same thing Ark with the Black Ark. Alright, then over here, we want to kill them. Drag Nagaron did. I might be able to confederate him. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. If we have a look at him at the moment. Overlord, I am Minus 72. 55 total attitude value. Problem is, I don't think it's going to go up. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. If I get it really, really high, I mean, like in like a thousand, I could cancel the military alliance. Oh no, that won't work. I'll lose my reliability. Ah, eh, whatever. I'll just kill him. There is little. I'll threaten him or something, we'll see. Okay, so we use this battle here to regenerate Malice. So basically, you try to alternate between tough-ish fights and then easy fights using using this fight here to um, regenerate Malice's health. Because if we summon Sarka and Sarka always comes back in at full health, as long as we try to end the battle soon after um, transforming into Sarka, everything should be fine. Because I took so much damage in the previous fight, I'll probably have to do a fairly early Tsarkan. That should be fine. Because here's the thing to note is that Melus is only like, effectively rank 1 at the moment. He's going to get more melee defense and ward save and all this kind of stuff. It's just It just takes time. Just got to get a few victories under his belt. Alright, I should be able to basically get instant army losses just by using Tarkan's abilities here. So yeah, going full Tarkan is better than a health potion. That being said, a health potion would definitely help because you can use the health potion while as Malice and as Tarkan. You can use it twice. Of course, it would be good if he had some kind of regeneration. There is an armor, I think, that we can get for that. Uh, yep, we want to sack it. Don't occupy anything at this point or else we ruin the run. <laughs> okay. And Fire then, yeah, don't worry about Root Marcher just yet. Get it on rank 7. Okay, we could go this way, but I actually want to go this way. Also, never, ever, ever, ever go into Force March. <laughs> it ruins it. Because I can't recruit while in Force March. Uh, there are some instances where it's possible to pull yourself out of Force March, but that usually requires you to switch a Lord.
Now, the thing is, with these settlements that we've sacked, we'll be able to come back and occupy them all, no problem, once we have access to Spite. And that being said as well, capturing these settlements is not going to make these battles easier. Um, it's just required in order to finish the Blitz. I tire of this. Okay, the Blighted Grove should be Black our next stop. Set the sails. I will not succumb. Having more campaign movement will just allow us to get a little bit of extra movement done every single time we we you know do the load, but it's not necessary. Five percent won't make any difference at this point. But yeah, we could get the campaigner trait, which will provide us with 10% extra movement. That would be nice. But it's not necessary. Although, perfect vigor is definitely helpful. We're bound to get it at some point because our capital is Hag Grief, and we're actually not close to Hag Grief. Now, the first defeat trait that we should go for is Sigvolds. Now, like I said, we don't need Sigvolds defeat trait for the end game stuff. Well, the, the last of the stuff we need to do, but. It would be helpful because a lot of lords don't have magical attacks at this point. So 10% extra physical resistance could really come in handy. Dark blade. Okay, so the enemy army is over here. And having um, Malice just level up a fair bit. The din of war. You know, it helps. Dark blade, relentless. On to slaughter. Yeah, they're going for them over here, and that's fine. Revenant chariots. See if we can manage to get to uh, above full health in this battle, because yeah, we we don't need to go Sarkan right away this time. Tyrant of battle. Yeah, Talisman of Preservation right off the bat. That would be just awesome. Oh, hang on. Yeah, get this one here off the battlefield before they do some damage to it. Alright, any casualties we take can be recovered, so that's fine. They're just, they're just going for it. That's fine. Cold one. Man, cold ones suck. They just suck. Just get them out of here. I know I didn't get the charge in there, but still, just terrible fighters. Get them out. Don't need them for this battle. Wasting my time. You'll know it's right time when that white line just goes down to zero straight. There it is. I'm fairly sure they can recruit swords from there. Uh, bleak, sorry, bleak spears. Uh, dread spears, sorry. Okay, I think that fully recovered us. So we got a relic sword. That's not really what I want. I want something that provides more ward save. Alright, rank four. That's good. Get that melee defense up. And we go down here. Cool. But another thing is that as we accumulate items, we can always fuse them for better ones later down the track. That's not a problem. And of course, we can save scum to try to guarantee that we actually get an armor of destiny or a potion of healing or a talisman of preservation. Those are the three main items that I want. Or actually, the trickster's helm might actually be more useful than the armor of destiny because the armor of destiny provides physical resistance, which can be bypassed by um, magical weapons. But I believe the trickster's helm provides more melee defense, which magic weapons do not bypass melee defense. Unless it's a magic missile. Because both have the same meta ward save. So you're trading physical resistance for melee defense. Sometimes it's better. It just depends on what you're going up against. If you're going up against somebody that doesn't have magic attacks, then obviously Armor of Destiny is better. Dark Blade! Do not order me around! Tyrant of Nagalor. I approve of these dark.
Alright, we should be strong enough to handle this army without any problems. And if we do take some damage, as long as the uh, Medusa doesn't take any damage, it should be fine. We'll just recover over time. And since we've got an easy battle coming up, we can use that to heal. So getting um, more casualty, sorry, more captives post-battle can be useful for healing your army up. I'm not sure if I should bother trying to wipe out all of the, um, Dark blade. Uh, the, like the rogue armies, the pirates out that way as well. Because if I do that, if I wipe out every single faction in the game, I'm pretty sure it'll cause a crash at the very end of it, which <laughs> will ruin the save file. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. Okay, so let's have a look here. Um, he's only got seven units. Not a big deal. We're at rank four. You know, we, we put a few points into melee defense. He's not exactly a great fighter. He's a metal wizard, I believe, so we, we should be able to manage this. Yeah, we could even auto resolve it. Uh, if I auto resolve it, it will do some damage to the Blood Rack Medusa. Ah, who cares? You're not even using it. Yeah, but what happens if I come across something that is actually difficult and I need every single hit point that I got? Don't forget, I can't recruit any units apart from regiments of renown. Yeah, my is still in good shape. These two here, you know, at least they're getting some experience. But I do not like cold ones. It's their speed that I have a problem with. 66 speed is just not good for cavalry. And if you're wondering why am I not using my infantry, it's because they'll just take too much damage and it'll take too long to recover them. Whereas, oh, that's good. Uh, these ones over here, they actually don't have that much health, so it's actually quite quick to recover them. Your servitude will be my problem. That is good. Dark blade. I mean, it's no talisman of preservation, but still, that gives us close to 50% ward save there. Losing All right, we gain two levels grip. up from that. Um, we'll put a point into root marcher and blade master. Leadership would be very important as well, but we'll worry about that later. So, we still going to need to sack this. We're, um... We're not at rank 7 yet. And when we do get to rank 7, when we occupy settlements, Malice Darkblade has to has, have no army in his, uh... In order to occupy it. Otherwise, he has to sack it. Otherwise, he can't reset his movement. So what we do here is once he gets rank 7 and we want to occupy a settlement that the um, the Black Ark can't get to, you can go over with the uh, with the army, sack the settlement, transfer the units back into the Black Ark, then go back over there and occupy it. Once you've got Spite, that is. Alright, that's fine. But yeah, they're Slaughter! trying really hard to... Uh, not come at us. Dark blade. We're not hidden this time, but it's a small garrison. Soulless. We should be able to handle it. Yeah, they're just going straight to the Medusa. It's like they know what I want to do. Get out of there. Get out of there. Revenant. Eager for battle. Yeah, they're just not interested in fighting these cold one knights, are they? Okay. Oh, to get rid of them. That's the done. Alright, we should be able to shoot them before they get too close. Okay, looks like the army losses is going to happen real soon, because this unit here is pretty much... Is that it there? Yeah, there Suffering we go. Just run back so you don't get shot. Pop this down so we heal, so that we're at full health. Nice. Just ticked over there. Because now Malice Darkblade will actually have more than full health. So it will be, be uh, good for the next fight. My only real problem is going to be dealing with the Bastion Settlements. I really have no idea how we're going to handle that at this stage here. I think I'm going to need other characters. I need to somehow recruit a character and get it to wake up. Which is possible if they have a mount. You take me. 
Another thing that we could do, and I just realized this. Dark blade. Mentor. If I have Mentor level 3, he's going to transfer experience over to other characters. Yeah, okay. I, I, that'll sort it out. Okay, I, I don't need to do the loyalty exploit. Cool, because I hate that one. It's so tedious. Yes. Yes. Tyrant of Nagalog. Okay. Okay. So what we need to do then is when he reaches rank 30, start creating characters. And sorry, not creating, just recruiting characters. Um so they can start gaining experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I would be good if they were close to the actual Bastion settlements, but yeah, they can manage. All right. Dark Blade. Uh, okay, so these ones here have been effectively defeated. We really don't need money for anything, so don't worry about that. Um, now, in terms of rights, we could do the right of the War Master, right? Um, could do that, but I actually think it might be better if I do Sacrifice to Cain, because that's just easier to make use of. It also gives me more casualties captured post-battle. Income from post-battle loot's not really needed. Um, don't need Sacrifice to Mathlan. Gift to the Witch King I won't need. But yeah, the army that we create from this, the problem with it is that it can't move on turn one. But I'm not sure about the actual units itself. If they transfer over to Malice, I don't know if they can move, but the character himself can't move. So I need to look into that when the time comes. Now that's going to be recruited at um, Hag Grief all the way over here. So maybe if we make our way over here, we could test it out. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. All right. There's an army in there, and it's Slanesh, so that's all going to be fairly high damage dealing. I don't think that Malice is going to be able to handle that on his own at this stage. Um, so just keep moving. This is my own decision. I admire your darkness. Yep. Now, when we've sacked this other settlement over here, we should be okay to actually start occupying them. I'll show you how this, um, how it's possible to move after, um, you've occupied a settlement. But like I said, we have to get spite. It's absolutely essential. Okay. Dreadlord of Nagara. Dark Do we have a deal? Now, we could have um, this character here as well, like, um, besiege it, but I don't think we Malevolent really need Lord. to. He, he's not the one going to be gaining experience. It's pretty much Malice Darkblade every step of the way. This guy here is just here to provide recruitment, that's it. Alright, um... I receive you in speak to them. Might as well pick up some money, who knows, I might be able to manipulate someone at some point. So I'll pick up some cash. It's will. Do you know what's funny? This is also technically a, this is Total War campaign. I just haven't declared war on everyone yet. Slaughter them all. Okay. So this will get us to rank seven. Now, after we've won this battle here, we need to transfer all of the units over to the Black Ark, get back on the land, occupy the settlement in whichever mount and then immediately switch the mount, start recruiting, save the game, load the game, and then we can move again. Now, if you do that with these units in the settlement, they, their movement will not be reset. And so you'll get stuck there, unless you disband them, which I don't want to do. Yeah, waste of troops. All right, there are these hell striders. They're probably going to come charging after us. Dealers in death. Cold ones. Cold blooded killers. Move. Okay, good. They went straight for Melus. I am fine with that. And like I said, at some point we are going to have to find our way over to Throt fairly early on to get that extra hit points. That's really gonna 
be quite helpful. Good. That was the only unit I was concerned about, because it was quick. Okay, now we've just got to watch out the army losses. Um, you can't click this after the victory has been claimed, so we have to time it just right. There it is. Cool. Once you've clicked it, it's fine. But yeah, once that's happened, you won't be able to click it. It gets locked out. Because it says here, um... Oh, no, I have to... Oh, he didn't summon. I was too late, actually. Ah. Oh. oh, well, we didn't heal. I was just too late. Oh, well. It's fine. Let's heal the next fight. Hmm. I gotta be a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker then. Maybe he got disrupted or something and it cancelled it. I'm not sure. So yeah, first defeat rate we'll go and get is Sigvols. We're really close to that. And then we'll swing around over through Norska. Go and grab Throts, maybe. Uh, yeah, Throgs, then Throts, I suppose. Alright, we definitely want to sack that. And there's Spite. Now, we can't go and occupy this right away. So here's the steps we got to take. We have to firstly transfer not these units around. over here. That has to be done. The ocean awaits. Transfer all of them. Yep. Must okay, that's control. fine. Recruit. Recruit. And then at this point here, assuming this works, you get the gist of it, and now I just gotta go and actually go and conquer the other 500 odd settlements in the game. And it will just be a case of pretty much just picking out the easy targets to begin with, and as Malice Darkblade gets better and better equipment and gets leveled up, eventually he will be a one-man doomstack and no one will be able to stand up to him, and he'll be able to just walk through the Empire just completely by himself, because everyone's just gonna be rank one. And anyone that might pose a little bit of a threat, I'll pick up the army. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're on spite. Uh, do I need to level up anything? Uh, you can, but you don't have to. But to do this. Okay. So now we occupy the settlement. will be no retreat. And then we have to switch him off the mount. And basically crossing my fingers here and hope that this works. I've already tested to see that this does actually work with Malice, but the problem is the game doesn't actually indicate that he can move after doing that. So I'm always like a little bit concerned because I, I didn't make a backup save file yet. So if this doesn't work, I literally have to start again because I won't be able to move Malice at all unless I can finagle a way to get him to move again. Um, but let's just see. I mean, I, I've done everything as far as I know correctly. I don't think I missed a step. Dark blade. Yeah, boy, it worked. Okay, there we go. So that enables us to be able to, um, yeah, like you just, I can pick up the rest of these units again now. Fire in my soul. Yes. Yeah, I can pick up all of them if I want to. Yep, and we can go and do this. Of course, if I go and sack it, I'd have to go over here and deposit it again. So it's just a question of whether or not uh, Malice can actually take on five units by himself, which I'm pretty sure he can. So yeah, just give them back. And then... Um, we can have him on foot or on... Right, hang on, let me just have a quick look. Preposterous. Uh, what's the garrison there? Yeah, there's equal amounts of anti-large and anti-infantry, so I reckon we're actually stronger when not on spite. So, just attack on foot. Yeah, that's fine. 
and then yeah just just keep taking out the low hanging fruit for the most part until he's ready to take on bigger enemies just takes time get his melee skills up get his unique skills up give him more ward save find some more equipment and he'll easily be able to take out that slanesh garrison by himself he's just not ready right this very second Dark blade. Moving out. now one thing you gotta note though when using him as a one man doom stack is that you can never let him actually break although if you lose the battle it's fine because you can actually still recover your movement so as long as he doesn't die it actually doesn't matter yeah remember this time to uh transform into Zarkan a lot earlier. Because, yeah, you can lose a battle, right, and, and then just reset your movement, and it's totally fine. Alright, I'm going to pop these down, and then go full Zarkan. Would have been good if the army losses had already triggered. He's almost at the point of Malice's health. Yeah. Uh, no point waiting. We'll. Oh, hang on, hang on. I think we can actually recover. Let's see. We're at 4 2. There's 30 seconds left. 4,200. We should recover about 200. Nah, this probably was a waste. I think this recovers about 200 health. Oh, yeah, it was just It was just a wash. And we got a heroic victory out of that as well, which I don't think makes any difference whatsoever. Now, I'll show you another trick to create multiple save files for, um, uh, for Warhammer 3 without having to go into the game files. Uh, yeah, we can occupy that this time. Uh, that is not really needed. Alright, so, now we have to hit Spite. And what you do is you go over here, and I'm just going to make Hag Grief uh, 1. Yep. And that'll create a new save file. Recruit. And now we could also use local recruitment. That works as well. So, it, you know, if the Black Ark isn't nearby. In fact, I'll showcase that. That works. Black hearted dreadlord. I admire. Yep. This should work. So yeah, it created a um, little save file. That way you've got a backup. Of course, that being said, I backed it up to the point where I'd already occupied the settlement, so it wouldn't have made any difference if I screwed it up. But we've already shown that it definitely does work. And it should work again here. I mean, it's the same conditions, except this time we started not on Spite, and then we go on Spite. The main thing here is you just have to switch a mount. It doesn't matter which mount. Something happens when you switch a mount. It, it like, gets rid of the fact that they occupied or raised a settlement. And then allows... It doesn't give you your movement back unless you do this. So you need both exploits in order for this to work. Dark blade. Yeah, good stuff. All right, so at this point here, I'm just going to go off and conquer the world. There's a lot I've got to go and do, including going back and recapturing these other settlements. Malice Darkblade has got a lot of leveling up to do. If we have a look at just what he can get in his um, skill tree here, obviously he's got um, the just the yellow line for you know, extra melee defense. That's useful. There's nothing in there for health. Uh, we've got the waking, which... Reduces the cooldown and all that stuff, and that's fine. Pain tolerance. Yeah, melee defense until transformed. Um, stalk. I don't think we really need that. Okay, then we got the slumber over here. Which, that'll provide extra ward save when transformed into Sarkan. We've got extra campaign movement range here, plus 5%. I guess that's something. 
Um, that is not needed at all. Just weapon strength plus 20% there. Spell resistance probably not really needed. Um, yeah, honestly, his skill line's kind of crap. But uh, we, I guess we have to rely, if we want to make him a lot stronger, we need to get better equipment. Um, and that's just going to take time. Alright guys, now I'm just going to go out and conquer the world. So I'll show you what the end result will be very soon. Okay, just a little bit of an update on how the Blitz is going. So far, so good. Um, picked up some interesting stuff. So what we did was... Um, I got to here, fought Sigvald the Magnificent, and then decided, eh, I'm going to go get some Lord Defeat trades. Packed up, and then left. I really should have picked these up over here, and I didn't think about it at the time, but I can easily go back over here. But I sailed around through here, as you can see through the Fog of War. We sailed around through here, and then I discovered a, um, like a sea encounter. And then I realized that I could have gotten a whole bunch of potentially really good buffs from these sea encounters. Now, the first one I encountered was actually a battle, so all I got was, like, money out of that. And then I found another one over here, and then I got the Curse of Cannibalism, Fire which gives me regeneration for ten turns, but I only need it for one turn, so Malice Darkblade has regeneration. Then I landed at a castle Alexandrinov, went through here. I didn't want to fight Kastelton because I don't want his defeat trait. Came through okay. here. I'm outside the range of Black the uh, the Black Ark now, but I can just locally recruit. So I hopped my way around through here, and I got Throat's Defeat Trait, as we can see here. I have had to fight some Kislevites, got Pride Assassin there, I got Deep Cleaner. So what I'm doing now is I could come up over here to, to defeat Throg, but I think it'd be better if I come over here and set sail back around and head over to the Badlands to go and get... Um, uh, Wurzag's defeat trait. Um, once I'm, like, got enough of these defeat traits, like, I don't have to do this, like, when we fought Hell Pit, which I did, you know, last turn, I took out Hell Pit without even needing to go full Sarkhan. Like, I took so little damage. Um, so it just really isn't a problem. Uh, but there's still some defeat traits out there, just in case it go up against anything particularly tough. But, uh, like, Malice is already starting to become a one-man Doomstack, and he's only rank 15. And, uh, yeah, we can easily just traverse across this territory here now, and I'm going to set sail again, maybe go get those other sea encounters. I could go get Bellicor for 5% weapon strength, all the other buffs are not needed. But, yeah, I think I might go pick up a few more um, good defeat traits. I also went and fought some battles with these two units and made sure they took 50% casualties so that we're starting to get towards, um, One can only uh, what's it called? Um, drenched in gore or whatever, wades through gore, something like that, for the extra 20% extra hit points. Not that he has even needed it so far, but uh, he so far hasn't got the part one, but I think if I do it one more time, he'll get it. I just need to get one of these guys down. And what I can do to uh, get them um, health back up is just go fight some battles and take on captives, and then they'll be restored over time, because Mal's Darkblade is now taking everything on by himself. So anyway, I'll just keep going with this, and I'll give you guys regular updates when key important things are going on. Alright, so here we are with an update on the Blitz. So, I've just defeated Nakai. As you can see by the map here, I've kind of gone a very long way around to ensure I've gotten certain defeat traits. So, last time we checked up, we were over here. So, what we did was we traveled all the way down through here. I got a whole bunch of sea encounters. Didn't bother fighting anyone here because I didn't want any unwanted, uh, like, traits. So that Malice could get the traits that I did actually want. I uh, came up through here and defeated um, Wurzag. Then immediately came back through this way. Around through Araby. Up through here and went and took out Tic-Tac-Toe. Now because I had already fought Greenskins, I already basically had the trait for defeating um, Greenskins. So the Leafcutter tribe down here, I figured I might as well attack them. Came down through here, up through this way, up to Quixotl. And this settlement over here was a ruin. Now, because I already owned other settlements in this province, I was still able to locally recruit. Now, at this point here, the Black Ark was going around the southern tip of um, of the Southlands. So, Malice had no Black Ark support, but luckily I didn't really need it. I was able to move all the way up to here using local recruitment. Uh, I didn't bother taking on Wood Elves because I didn't want to take get the Wood Elf trait. Came over to the Golden Tower, no problem. Defeated Krokgar. And because I had already fought Skaven, started to fight uh, Clan Mordkin. Came up through this way, took them out completely, 
Went to the Temple of Skulls, then the Serpent Coast, and then set sail because I didn't want to fight these guys over here. Came up through this way here, landed at Bitter Bay, took out, um, I got to, what's his name, Imric's defeat trait. Then immediately came back to Bitter Bay, sailed around over here, didn't want to fight any of these guys right away. Came through here, went all the way around Ind, up through here, landed there and just defeated Nakai the Wanderer. So this is the state of how things currently are in terms of Malice Darkblade. He's essentially finished in terms of my ability to make him a one-man doomstack. Going to get any more defeat traits at this point is probably not necessary. He, in the fight against Nakai the Wanderer, I didn't go full Zarkane, and I took that much damage. So the C encounters, we've picked up Ensorcelled Blades, uh, the Bloody Red Spots, so that gives him um, Frenzy, and of course he's got the Curse of Cannibalism. He also picked up the Favorable Winds, which I don't think that that actually counts. That extra campaign movement range, because we can see here that his maximum movement is 145, which seems a little bit low for plus 25%, but anyway. We've got a Helm of Discord, Warrior Bane, Talisman of Preservation, and Whip of Misery. So, still looking for a, um, like, Armor of Destiny. But if we have a look at our ward 7 at the moment, we're at 56% with 20% physical resistance. Here are the traits so far. we got Deep Cleaner, uh, Great Green Killer, Out of the Skies, Saurus Miter, Dragon Slayer, Wanderer No More. There's probably room for a little bit more here. So what I could do, because I've already fought Cathay, um, I could um, finish up over here, finish um, Nakai off, and then make my way up through here to go and fight... Uh, what's his name? Zhao Ming for extra armor, which don't really need that much, and then push up through here to go to get to Miao Ying for a little bit of extra melee defense. But I think at this point here, with 124 melee defense, and considering that every character we encounter is going to be level 1, because it is still turn 1, um, I don't think he really needs it, so I'm not going to worry about getting any more traits. I got all the ones that I wanted, any more, it's just not necessary, I think. I mean, I really haven't needed to use his army at all. I did try to get him the, the Wade Through Gore trait, but it just wouldn't trigger. Um, I would send him in with, like, two of these guys, get them down, uh, damage 50%, and then win the battle, and then it would still say, like, Heroic Victory, and it just wouldn't trigger. So, I don't know if he's made any progress towards that, but... Um, yeah, it just wasn't triggering. And at the end of the day, he just wasn't hitting it. In most battles, I'm just not even needing to go Sarkan. I also decided to go with the Sacrifice to Kane. This has been really helpful in just getting rid of tons of chaff. Because even though this gives us a really big army, I just don't think I'd really make as good use out of it as the Sacrifice to Kane. Um, also, now that he's got regeneration for the army, I could technically put the Blood Rack Medusa in his army to regenerate it, so it can actually heal now. The problem is, is that while we're in land, I need to occupy settlements without an army. So, having these guys here is yes. just for field battles. So, most of the field battles are just really easy, so it's just not a problem. Now, the concerns that I'm having at the moment are, when I look over here, getting through the Bastion is going to be very difficult. Because we're not going to be able to locally recruit from there. And I don't think it's possible to get a Black Ark here. If we have a look... We just select the Black Ark. What now? If we have a quick look, we can see that we can move up to here. But as we start to go inland here into the river, it doesn't actually let us go in there. So I can get a little bit of ground. But... Uh, I'm not sure if the Black Ark is going to be able to support Lockyer... Uh, Lockyer... Um, Malice as we go in through here. And since I can't locally recruit there, getting to the Red Fortress is actually going to be really difficult. So what I might need to do is have um, Malice Darkblade just sack these fort settlements. And what we want to do is recruit lords in these spots here. We need three separate lords. And then as we gain experience, we'll use the Mentor trait, which I don't have just yet, which I don't need right now. So this way here, I can just keep accumulating more experience just for Malice. And then when they get their access to their mounts, um, I should be able to movement bug them in to capture the settlements. But of course, once they get there, they won't be able to uh, move any further since I won't be able to locally recruit and get them out of there. So what I'll have to do with Malice to get to the Red Fortress is actually go all the way around the mountains and pull a village, essentially, all the way through here, come up through here and just hope that with all the campaign movement range that I've got, that I can manage to locally recruit and 
get to the Red Fortress. I'm just not 100% sure that I can make it. There are a few settlements out in the Chaos Waste that I am very concerned about in terms of my campaign movement range. Especially, like, settlements out here near Valkyrie, because these settlements are very far away from their actual borders. So, I'm a little bit concerned that I might not be able to reach it. So, it's quite possible that I won't actually be able to do this in one turn. Uh, but everywhere else, it shouldn't be a problem due to the density of territory, at least in terms of where the border is. Uh, and then, of course, we'll, we will need to come over to here at some point and also put down another lord so they can go and occupy these gates here. Because every single settlement needs to be occupied. I'm not at all concerned about Ulf 1 because it's very cl close to the coastline. I'll be able to use Black Ark recruitment there to activate the movement bug. So um, Malice will be fine right there. But I need to do that stuff fairly soon. If we leave it too late, I, there won't be enough enemies left in the game for me to get experience into those lords. Anyway, that's the progress that we're up to now. I'll give you guys an update when we're probably around here figuring this out. So right now, I'm going to conquer Cathay pretty much outright. If we have a look at ter some territory, I've only got 26 regions. But that being said, I haven't really been focusing on capturing territory at this point. I've been making Malice as strong as possible, especially getting that tic-tac-toe trait, which is going to be really handy. But now that I've done that, now I'm going to be really sort of painting the map, starting with Cathay, and trying to make sure every single region in this area is under my full control. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Let's, um, let's uh, get on with the game. Alright, time for another update. So, we're about halfway through conquering Cathay. I'm actually taking as much territory as I can now, trying to be as systematic as possible. You can see we've actually got a decent amount of non-Border Gore territory, right? And we've reached the gates here. So, this is one of the main challenges of the campaign, managing to occupy these settlements, because um, if we do occupy it with Malus, he can't leave because we can't locally recruit and I can't get the... Um, the Black Ark over there. So what I've done now is I have recruited some new lords Supreme and just stuck them in these settlements. Grass. These ones here cannot move currently, right? They've only just Supreme been recruited. They were recruited at rank one and they've currently leveled up a fair bit because Malice has Dark the play. mentor skill. So as he gains victories, they will gain experience. Now, at what point do they go and occupy Supreme. these settlements? We have to wait Worse until they hit useless. rank seven. I won't be able to move them until then. Once they hit rank seven, I can take them on and off their steed, I'll be able to locally recruit, which will reset their movement, and then they go and occupy a gate, at which point they'll be disbanded, because that's the end of what I need them to do. So we need three separate lords to take these areas out. So I've got, well, this one here was the first one I recruited, and then there was this one. So I actually came up through here first, and then doubled back around here, took out Lockyer and a few of these ones, because they were a little bit tricky to, to deal with to begin with, and then came back all the way over here. So I'm in the process of sacking these settlements. Right, so we've still got the snake gate over here. It's super easy. Malice Darkblade is a one-man doom stack. I don't even... I go into these battles now, and I just AFK them, because Malice just can't be beaten. He, I'm not even needing to uh, transform into Zarkand. Um, he's basically unstoppable. I don't even have his best equipment yet. You know, I've got the Talisman of Preservation, but i still got a Helm of Discord as opposed to Armor of Destiny. I'm sure I could fuse some stuff, but I'm just not encountering any problems. Now... Getting into the Chaos Wastes from here is not possible unless I occupy Dragon, uh, Dragon Gate. Uh, from here, I should be okay. Either that or I need to go around, which I'm not sure if that's going to work out so well. But uh, it's not going to be too long until this one hits uh, rank 7. And I'll recruit another Lord over here. So one for each of these gates. But that's the one that needs to be captured first so Malice can come in through over here. So right now, Malice is just doing a whole bunch of cleaning up. And I also need to put some Lords over here and uh by the empire i'm gonna to need to do probably two i don't think this one here is going to be a problem because i'll be able to park a black arc there that one there is a bit iffy and this one here is definitely a bit iffy i mean if i put it right over there i really don't think the black arc range would reach and i can't recruit from forts as i've explained before so yeah just got to go on and keep doing that but i need to get over there fairly soon now another thing is that once these ones here have occupied a settlement i need to immediately disband them so they don't keep absorbing that experience because with each new lord that i recruit the experience gets spread out fairly evenly now, um so I just i gotta be careful that hopefully there's enough experience in the game to obtain to get essentially five lords to rank seven so they can get uh, the movement that being said i only really need to do six because malice can end his journey capturing one of the gates if he absolutely has to 
All right, so I'll just give you an update in a while. I'm probably going to have a big time jump here and conquer a whole bunch of territory because right now it's just a whole bunch of really easy to get to settlements and uh, we can sort of leave this stuff till a bit later. So we've kind of got a moment of truth moment here, whereas if this plan here doesn't work, I'm going to have a really hard time conquering the entire map in one turn because this area here is only really easily accessible through this gate. Now, if we have a look here with Malice, I've just reset his movement. He cannot reach Dragon Crossroad. Now, from within the Dragon Gate, I cannot recruit any troops. So I can't reset his movement within this province. So I can't just stand there and try to get there next, uh, you know, after I hit end turn. Won't work. So what I need to do is have this character here, who I recruited when I captured Nangao, and he only requires rank 4 to get uh, his mount. Um, if he can occupy this, maybe Matlas can actually reach Dragon's Crossroad, because you get free movement within the area of influence of a gate. Now, if you're also wondering, why did I recruit Sorceresses here instead of Dreadlords? Because Dreadlords get their mount at rank 4. Honestly, the amount of experience needed is not really that important, it seems, because I've conquered all of Cathay, and that's only, what, 60-odd settlements? And we managed to get this one here to rank 5. And of course, Malice is now rank 50, so he's providing an even greater portion of his experience over to these lords. So, it's really not a big deal um, which one we did. Also, I only have access to 4 Dreadlords in total. After I've run out of Dreadlords, that's it, I won't have access to any more. And we need 5 lords in total in order to uh, complete the campaign without needing Malice to like end his movements. So... Actually, four bare minimum, but, you know, you want a bit of wiggle room. Anyway, so let's see if this works here. We need this one to Never occupy on. the gate. For the now, if we have a look here, Lord this guy is not able to recruit anything here, so I can't reset his movement. However, there is a bit of another movement exploit that we could do if this doesn't work. There's only six units in here. I would probably only need a moderately strong lord to go and beat them, especially considering I have uh, Dark Conduit. So what I could do, if we have a look here, if I switch this out, I can force March to here, and then what I can do is actually tag him out and get another lord, put him in force march as a way of sort of looping it out. So all I need is somebody that can do it. However, Malice can reach. So don't worry, we continue. So the moment of truth worked, the plan's worked that's fine so oh Black -hearted i don't need to keep this guy here i suppose um just wondering could i reset his movement again if i force march him to here because if i force march him to there i mean he won't really be able to move really uh i guess i can figure out if there's a way i can actually restore him but anyway malice continues on into the chaos waste once we've captured the settlement we'll definitely be able to um uh, reset our movement, but I have to fight every single one of these battles manually, so it's a, it's a bit tedious. This is very time consuming. Like what I've done here in Cathay has literally taken me all goddamn day. So yeah, time, quite time consuming. I'm in no rush to get over the Empire to put another Lord down. Um, it, it seems like we'll have plenty of plenty of uh, enemies to kill to get them leveled up. Anyway, I'm gonna continue on with this Blitz and just see how we go, and I'll bring it back up at moments of truth. So it's time for another update, and it's been a long time since the previous one. So I've more or less had no problems up until this point. I've gone around, conquered a whole bunch of stuff. I've definitely reached the trait uh, cap. I tried to get Archeon's defeat trait, and I didn't achieve it because I already had too many. So we came through here, went through the um, the Mountains of Morn. Didn't really see any real issues. But what I wanted to do was try to get myself over to the Empire so we could start dealing with some troublesome areas over here, like Fort Sol and Helmgard. I'm not too worried about this one here because I know that the um, the Black Ark range can reach that one, so I deposited these lords and then just um, moved away. Now, while I was here, I also encountered this region here and realized that this is a big problem because the entrance to the Southern Grey Mountains both has ruins, and I can't recruit locally from ruins. So you end up with this problem here. So I just got this Dreadlord to rank 4. So you encounter this problem here where I can't reset his movement now. Now, I tried having Malice Darkblade run from here to here and he just doesn't make it. So I need another method to get Grimhold. Now once I've got Grimhold, 
these ones here will actually be able to move again. Now, here's what we needed. I needed this one here at rank 10, because I needed an aristocratic name of power. Dark path there for the extra campaign movement range. Then what we have to do is force march as close as possible to Grimhold. I can't take her out of force march unless I tag her out with somebody else. So now, which law of magic would be best against the dwarves? Probably dark magic. And because she already had a um, uh, name of power, you st if you disband them, you, st you still get to choose another one. So, yeah, grab that one. We're not going to be seeing her again, so that doesn't really matter. Okay, then we can take her out of Force March, and she's actually able to make the attack. However, she's now at rank 1. But, I can recruit some regiments of renown. Now, at this point in the campaign, I haven't actually um, recruited any units. I've still got all the regiments of renown ready to go. So, if I was to attack this with a regiment of renown, I won't be able to use her again. However, if I attack it and manage to win this with her by herself, um, then um, I can use her again. Because if I have any units in the army, I guess I could disband them. But one thing, another thing that I'm trying to do is get a confederation with Malekith. Now, if we have a look here, I've been dragging him into every single war. His relationship with us is going really high, but it hasn't moved from its initial value. However, if I cancel the trade agreement, it'll actually improve relations with him. So if we have a look at this at the moment, our relative faction strength is actually increasing over time as our lords get increased ranks. So I really want to try to make sure that I don't disband any units, because it might be possible that I can get my strength ranking high enough, just with regiments of renown and, and recruits, uh, the recruits that I start off with, and um, possibly confederate him by threatening him, which our reliability doesn't matter. Now, it might have been easier to do the right of the Wallmaster. It was definitely possible for us to have done it, but I did the sacrifice to Cain, so now I've got a cooldown of five turns on, on all the um, on all the rights. However, the sacrifice to Cain has made it way more tolerable for Malus to be fighting these battles because, honestly, most of the kills happen from Dark Conduit. Now, with this one here, if I give this one enough equipment, I should be able to do this on her own. But what I'm going to do is just get a few ranks under her belt so that I can get some cheaper chill wins. And we'll see how we go from there. It would also help, I suppose, if I had Student of the Dark Tower. and Because um, yeah, 50 wins of magic is not tons. But anyway, that's that's this update. I'll let you guys know if there's any other problems. But it seems like with this, like taking this won't be a problem. And we'll be able to do it. And once I've done that, then we can get um, um, Malice back over here. He's going to have to come over here to deal with Athalorn at some point anyway. He will be able to conquer the entire province. It was just getting to Grimhold that was a problem, which... Nah, uh, just, just wait. I'll do that eventually. Okay, so it's time for a bit of an update and also something interesting in this campaign is about to happen. So it's been ages since the previous update and we've just about reached the halfway point. I tell you what, I'm getting some serious fatigue with this, but we're at 244 settlements. So what I've been trying to get Malice to do is go to all the regions that could potentially be difficult to reach. So I had him go through the mountains areas, anywhere where a black art can't get to, those are the regions that we need to check out first, because anywhere that the black art can get to, that's not a problem. Now the reason we have to do that stuff first is because we're gaining experience as we're fighting battles. What if I need to recruit a lord and level that character up and there's not enough experience left to get them to rank 7, 9 or whatever is needed? I don't have that many um, lords available left. I've only got one dread lord left. Um, that I can recruit. Um, so we need to check all that stuff up now. So what I've been doing, uh, Malice landed in Lustria. I'm not, I haven't been particularly thorough. We're just g going through the mountains, checking out all these re regions. I checked out all of these ones here. They're, they're fine. I'll be able to reach all that. It's not a problem. The mountains are more of a concern. So we landed here, went through this way. I wanted to check out this mountain here. It was all fine. So it came up through this way. These are fairly spaced out settlements. Not a problem. Came up through here. Up, 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 up through here. 
and I want to be checking out this area here because these are very um, large regions and I'm not sure if Malus's range will actually reach it all in one go. So I need to check that now. That way, if he can't reach it, I can recruit a Lord and there's time still to, um, to do various movement bugs to get them there. But if I leave it too late, then it's, I can't do anything about it. If there's not enough experience, I have to go hunt down pirates or use the loyalty exploit, which I really don't want to do. Now, the other thing that's about to happen here that's quite interesting is I think I can confederate um, Malekith. So, as the campaign's been going on, he has been getting loads of ex loads of uh, relationship with us um, through all the military actions. And on this turn, well, obviously this is all one turn, but I, I fought this battle here and then suddenly noticed that my relative faction strength went from like 6 to 16.1. Now that fluctuates a fair bit. Now his relationship with me was plus 55 and it wasn't increasing, like, but it was potentially increasing over the next few turns, but we don't want to press end turn. So one thing that you can do to reset that is cancel an agreement. Um, you'll lose a little bit of relationship with him, but because he was going up to 1800, he actually instantly gained 400 relation with us, which allowed us to get the baseline evaluation down from 70 to 32. So there's some wiggle room here for a confederation at 15.9. Now, the next thing that we can do is declare war on a few people to try to get this relationship improved a little bit more so if we have a look at it it's at 16.1 so we're going to go down here we're going to declare war on some bretonians i found that declaring war on same race factions tends to make the situation worse like if i have a look at it now that should have improved by about 0.1 yeah it did by 0.1 so after this i'm not really going to be able to do any diplomacy anyway and diplomacy was never the focus of this Although I did sell a region to um, Kugath and immediately took it back. I just wanted to see if I could do that. Um, there is much yeah, if we declare war on a few legendary lords who we have no interest in doing any sort of negotiating with. That should have improved things ever so slightly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 16.6. Okay, and then the next thing. Okay. Next thing is if we come over to who's got movement. Need to make sure you've got movement. Okay, you. And hire some regiments of renown. Now, um, I got to be careful here. I don't want to recruit any of the regiments of renown that have siege attacker because I might need them. But anything that doesn't have siege attacker, go for it. So these two here have siege attacker. Leave them in reserve. Now the whole purpose of this just increase our strength ranking in Malika's eyes. So if we have a look at that now, <laughs> you know, we're getting pretty close. 18, 18.8. Okay. Now, we threaten him. And we just scored Malekith. Cool. Now, I can't really make that good use out of him, to be honest. Um... He does have some global bonuses, but nothing that's really going to help this campaign. Now, surprisingly enough, uh, actually, Lord Recruit Rank Plus 2 would be quite helpful um, if I had gotten that earlier on the campaign. But this was the first opportunity. I've been checking it constantly. This is the first opportunity I've had to actually confederate him. The only legendary lord that I really think could have benefited the campaign was actually Marathi, but I have no means of confederating her. She Your just with me doesn't like me enough. I just so can't. I can't no make that work. Request. So there's no way I'm going to be able to get her to confederate. I need multiple turns to make that happen, and we're trying to do this on turn one. But anyway, now I've got Malekith. Um, he's not a one-man doomstack. He doesn't have the curse of cannibalism, but I could potentially go in out there and get it for him. Uh, but now that's given me some more troops to work with. Not that I'm even using troops. Mal uh, Malice is doing everything. But I do have Malekith, and that saves me having to fight Nagaron there. Anyway, time to keep going on and slog through this, because I'm, I'm at halfway point at this point. It's so massive. Anyway, got to get on with it. Okay, so time for a bit of an update, because it's actually been quite a while. We have now conquered 422 settlements. And at this point here, it's basically GG because 
most of the difficult to reach settlements have now been obtained. I've gone through all the mountains, checked every region that I thought was going to be a problem, and I've obtained everything. So even Athel Lauren has been captured. I've had to use um, not Malice Darkblade to occupy settlements every now and again. So for example, Oak of Ages, can't recruit from it. Um, so I couldn't get him out of there. But now what we've got going on over here is Malice is accompanied by Malekith, who's now at rank 50, and also these two other lords who are approaching rank 50. And um, we're actually able to order resolve most battles now, especially the minor settlements. And what this is doing is speeding things up considerably by using these four. Because that's the maximum I can bring. I still need to use one-man armies. Because um, if I bring any troops in, they're just going to get killed. Because I'm just immediately occupying them. So previously, if I just had Mouse Darkblade, I would have had to afford this manually. And that saves me a hell of a lot of time. And the thing is, every now and again, I have to fight a battle manually with these guys. I don't have a choice, especially with walled settlements. But I've got them all with Armor of Eternal Servitude, which gives them regeneration, so I don't need to go get the Curse of Cannibalism. So all three of them have that. And of course, he's got the Curse of Cannibalism, so he's just regenerating. So every now and again, they have a bit of a regen, and then they continue auto resolving through the thing. But minus so much. So this one over here, I should be able to um, auto resolve no problem, but I'll definitely have to manually resolve uh, Kassabar. Um, I have been able to order resolve fights with legendary lords. So, for example, Setra over here, order resolved him. Order resolved the entirety of of the of um, what's it called, Rapunzel's faction, and uh, with um, Arkan as well. No, I did have to actually fight the manual battle manually. It was of Kalis Palace, and um, yeah, we're just going through and getting the last few settlements. So the regions that I've left till last are the ones that I know were never going to be a problem because they're coastal regions for the most part. So the Southern Chaos Waste uh, were never going to be an issue because every single region there can be um, uh, reinforced from the Black Ark, which is currently sitting over here. And uh, I don't think there are any more difficult to reach settlements. So I just need to go on and just get the job done. I've also got to remember about these ones over here, but again, that's a coastal area. That's not going to be a problem. And I think there's like another 100 settlements to go, but um, things are picking up pace now, so it's really not that big of a deal. So I'll keep going and give you guys an update, maybe close to the end. Alright, so I hit a little bit of a roadblock at this point in the campaign where this settlement here, we can't actually attack it because this army is standing on top of the city and not garrisoned inside of it. So essentially making, making an impossible move. But it's only turn one, so if I hit end turn, they'll move out of the way. But... Uh, we have to find a way to get them to move out of out of this position. Now, I did try to get uh, Silostra over here to push over this way to get her to come and reinforce, but that didn't work. I brought all of my characters over here and just tried to block certain pathways, but no matter what happened, she always just found some way to not go over here. So we got rid of her and occupied the settlement, and now I'm going to cause this lord here to defect, which is my lowest level lord. Didn't want to have to do this, but I don't see any other choice. I don't have the option to confederate them. Okay, so now we bring Malice over to here, and I launch the attack. Nowhere to run. And what we're doing is pushing it over to the other lord so that they can reinforce this guy here, so I can just beat them. So you may have also noticed that my faction name has changed to Chaos Dwarves. Yeah, I did that to mess with people in the community post. Most people didn't fall for it, but some people did. I just thought it'd be funny. Because yeah, you can change your name, which I mentioned earlier. So this will be really easy, you just... They'll start clumping around, and when they've got a nice big clump going, then we pop down a Dark Conduit. Malice Darkblade is definitely a one-man doom stack at this point. There's just no way that they can beat him. Unsuitable shield wall fodder. Yeah, it stands within the zone of control here. Now there's two ways we can go about this. One way is we can get them to join war against them. We do that this way, offer them to join war, offer them the Twisted Glade and some money, and then that way 
they'll reinforce us when we attack them. But that would require me then to lose the battle so they get pushed out of the way. The easier option is just declare war on them. And you that way they reinforce the Separatists. And then, I don't have to lose. Now, because we've got Lightning Strike, it will take them a few moments to get in, but I, I only need to win the battle, so if I win the battle before these guys even show up, that's fine as well. Oh, I just didn't manage to beat them in time. It's alright. Just go with Sarkan just to get through this a bit quicker. Because that's really what all these abilities are for. Just try to get through these battles a bit quicker, because otherwise it's super grindy, because you can't lose. I mean, there's no way. But Sarkan's abilities dish out more damage to mass infantry than Malice's do. Cool, that sorts them out, and I think that army there will get wiped out. Yep. Dark blade. Cool, don't need another battle, and we just take the settlement. Paint cool. The and once again, just in case you're not familiar how we're capturing settlements and able to move on, when we switch our mount... Come on, oh my god, so much lag now. When we switch our mount... You can see he's gotten some of his movement back, and then when we recruit and then load again, he's able to keep moving. This is why we've got so many, like, just one Lord armies, and those are those regiments of renown that I recruited ages ago. And we're just going around doing, uh, you know, one-man armies taking out all these settlements, but they're, they're weak, so it's not a problem. Anyway, we just got to go finish off the rest of this, and then the one-turn one uh, blitz is done. So here we are finally at the end of the road, just one settlement left to take, and then the entire world has been conquered on the first turn. So we've got Malice and Malekith here. I could have brought more, but I wanted this to be a little bit different, just wanted these two to, to deal with all this, and this will give you a feel for just how overpowered they've become at turn one. So looking at what remains, it's just a bunch of pirate factions. I went through and made sure every other faction is wiped out. Now, we want to leave some of the pirate we factions around because we need to leave at least one. Because if we wipe out every single faction, then you won't be able to load the save file afterwards. And in the description of this video, I'm going to leave a Google Drive link so that you can download the save file. Don't know what you're going to do with it, but I'll give it to you anyway. Alright, so let's uh, get on with this battle here. Oh, I wasn't expecting an actual order resolve victory there. It is on very hard battle difficulty. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. Spare none. I wonder, because I've been using them on their mounts for a while, I wonder if I could have gotten some more order resolves if I had them not on their mount. <laughs> well, it's too late now. Anyway, uh, I'll fight this uh, battle manually anyway. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Don't need your lightning strike. Alright, so we'll wait for Malekith to show up, and then we'll just go into melee. So Malekith is going to take 30 seconds to come in. Yep. I'll tell you what, the Dark Conduit has been really helpful in getting through these battles very quickly. Now the thing is with this campaign, is that the battles themselves were not difficult at all. The difficult part was just the logistics of being able to move around the campaign map. Especially on those settlements that were particularly tricky to get to, such as Karak Norn, the Black Forests. Um, the Northern Chaos Waste has a province that has two ruins in it, and uh, no settled fa uh, settled, like settlements that you can go and conquer, if that makes sense. Um, I'll go over there and show you what I mean after this battle. 
But basically, you can't take Malice in there because you can't get him out, so I had to send other characters to go and occupy it. Now, Malice is going to go and take on just the, the regular rabble, especially the uh, the Phoenix, but Malekith is going to go after Tyrion. Because they've got match combat animations. Malekith doesn't have that much ward save, so that Phoenix is actually a bit of a problem there. So he's only sitting on 26% ward save, plus he has regen, so that fire attack is actually going to really help hurt. If Tyrion goes over to Malice, Malice will beat the crap out of him. Of oh, when enough of their units crowd around, we'll pop down the Dark Condor. But right now, just not enough of them have done that. Okay, Phoenix is down. I thought it would give uh, Malekith a little bit more of a tough time, but his melee defense is pretty high. He doesn't have as many good defeat traits as um, as Malice. Malice has got all the real stats. Alright, that looks pretty good. I'll take that. If enough of a blob shows up, we'll pop down Sarkan. Just to speed things up a little bit. There's no need for this battle to last half an hour. But you can see both of them basically just can't be touched. Unfortunately, this isn't really the best place for a fight, either. Alright, time for Tsarkan. So yeah, really easy fight. They didn't even stand a chance. Make sure you get Tyrion. It's just to try to get as many kills as possible. So that the next battle can just be auto resolved. Okay, Tyrion's are gone. Cool. Pretty funny if we were able to order resolve this battle, but we won't be able to resol resolve the next one. But we'll see. I should be able to. And yeah, we end up with more health than what we started with uh, with Malice there. Unsuitable shield wall fodder. All right, I should be able to attack that because if I attack the settlement, they get a huge amount of water resolve buff. Yeah, 
And if we attack the army, looks like Malekith may not. Okay, there we go. He's going to reinforce. End their existence. Surely someone will pay for your miserable lives. Dark Blade! And let's have Malekith take Lothurn. Paint the map. And there we go. Turn one, full map completion. Using a whole series of movement bugs. But that's the thing about move uh, with uh, blitzes. They always uh, rely on using movement bugs. Every single one that I've done from, you know, Medieval 2 to Empire Total War, Shogun 2. Yeah, those are the ones I've done the blitzes on. Now Warhammer 2. You could do it in Rome 2 as well, but I never bothered to do a blitz for that one. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the stats and stuff for this campaign. So there we are with the full map. There are 554 settlements in the game, unless there's something I missed, which I was pretty thorough. There's no factions left, so I'm pretty sure I got everything. But if we come over here, I can show you roughly what the path I took was. So obviously we started over here. Throt the Unclean, that was where I wanted to go for that. Then I came down to the Southlands, and I went for um, Wurzag, Tic-Tac-Toe, Kropgar, Imric, I need that fire resistance. Then I went for Nakai the Wanderer. And then after that I didn't care about defeat traits anymore. And just plowed right through. Villagers defeat traits actually was very useful because it provided melee defense. Came through that way. What I was doing here was mainly looking for the mountain areas and trying to figure out how to go about them. And if I needed to recruit lords to go and occupy ruins, then I had to do that early. If I left it too late, then I wouldn't have enough opportunity to uh, give them experience through mentor. That's why it was really important to have our troops ready by the gates. Except for the ones at Ulthwine, I didn't have to worry about that. Then after I went through the mountains, confederated Malachus over here. At this point here, I was confident I'd Dealt with all the difficult to reach settlements. I didn't know about this one over here at the time. And then I started to be a bit more systematic in occupying settlements. Athel Lauren couldn't be occupied by. Sorry, not Athel Lauren. Um, Oak of Ages couldn't be uh, occupied by Malice Darkblade, so I had to leave someone behind to, uh, to occupy that. And they you know, recruited at rank 1 and to wait for them to get to rank 7. So you'll notice soon it'll just get occupied. There it is, because they got the ranks. Came down to the Southern Chaos Wastes. Finished up Lustria. Lustria was probably the easiest of the continents to deal with. There was no issues with that one at all. And the only problem with Nagaroth was, of course, the Black Forests over here. But we found a way around that. And then Ulthwan was an absolute cakewalk. Actually, Ulthwan was the easiest continent. And there we go. The full map completion there. If you want to have a look at statistics... Current turn one, I captured 553 settlements. So one of the settlements I actually captured twice because I sold a settlement to Kugath because um, there were two settlements in this game that I didn't capture and that was Hagrief and Nagarond because I started off with Hagrief and never sold it and Nagarond I, um, I confederated. So, the settlement that I sold was this one over here, the Dragon Isles. I sold Dreadrock to Kugath. I just wanted to see what would happen. I sold it to him for like six grand or something. No, three grand. And I just took it back straight away. That's why it says one settlement lost. Because that's what that counts there. Okay, if we get looking at diplomacy, I encountered a 270, but somehow destroyed more factions than I encountered. Maybe that's because of the Separatists. I'm not sure. So, War Declarations 280. Which is more factions than I encountered. Didn't spend any money, although I did. I did actually spend money. Just didn't spend any money over the end turn. Most of the money was just spent on Regiments of Renown and Recruiting New Lords. 
fought 771 battles. 465 of them had to be fought personally. Those That was probably the first half of the campaign. Once I got Malachus, I was able to order resolve a lot more. And then when I had four lords running around together, I was order resolving probably more than half the battles at that point. So, 771 victories, no defeats. I disbanded the initial hero, we saw that. And there we go, that's the statistics. So there we go. That is the Blitz done. Now, in terms of, why would you bother doing this? Yeah, you, you wouldn't normally bother doing this. It's not a fun campaign. You do this kind of stuff just because you just want to see if you can do it. That's, that's really all this is all about. Uh, but now that it's done... Um, if you want to download the save file, don't forget that there is going to be a Google Drive link in the description, which will allow you to download it. If you want to go through and scrutinize things, check if I made any mistakes, uh, feel free to go through. Or if you want to continue the campaign from here on turn one, or you know, take this campaign and brag on the Reddit, or do whatever you want with it, I don't mind. As far as I'm concerned, this is now public domain property. You can do with it whatever you want. I've renamed the faction back to Hag Grief. So, no silly buggery there with that. No longer is it called the Chaos Dwarfs. So, feel free to enjoy it with whatever you can. I mean, if you want to take out the pirates, go right ahead. Um, you've got an absolute horde of items over here. I really didn't do that much uh, fusing. This is just items gained just from the victories. It's because I fought so many battles. I've just got like 10 of every type of item. But yep, there you go. Um, you could always revive the other... Dark Elf Legendary Lords that I wiped out to confederate them. It's entirely up to you. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Really appreciate all the support. Uh, this series here, well, this standalone video, would not have been possible without the continued support of Instant Gaming, so big thanks to them. Don't forget to check them out if you haven't already. Get yourself a good deal. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Later.